You're listening to Coffee Writers Cafe, a recorded conversation where good ideas are brewed between writers, believers, and friends. Hey there, and welcome to Coffee Writers Cafe. I'm one of your hosts, Lydia, and I am joined by... Greg. Andrea. John. Alex. Tanara. And we are excited to be back together again in the same room. So unfortunately, you can't see us through the Zoom videos, but we can see each other. That's nice. All right, we're going to get into it, and it is time for... One, two, three. Prompt, Prompt response. response. Okay, y'all. That was awesome. Well done. It's time for prompt response. I'm, I'm in awe of this because uh, we had to practice. I'm just saying. <laughs> Tonight's image was a really cool one. You're going to see that image on the screen now. Alex picked it out. Props to Pinterest for the fantastical. Uh, I'll start us off. I titled this The Cloud Pickers Union. <laughs> I'm proud to represent the Cloud Pickers Union of the Kingdom of Heaven. Many people think clouds are just puffs that produce rain and no more. That's the plan. I am didn't want everyone to know what purposes lay in lie in all things. He likes to call these things his little secrets of the kingdom. Well, we angels are honored and proud to ensure that the dreams caught in the clouds are released back to those dreamers. Oh, we've seen them all. Dreams for a new puppy, dreams to be a dancer, a writer, a world traveler for the kingdom, even an acrobat. You name it, we've picked it out of the fluff to ensure it makes its way back and has a chance to materialize. We here at the Union have a 90% reassociation rate, and while we're proud to say that many a human down there on Earth has gotten their purposes, purposes back by believing in their dreams again, our numbers are slipping a bit. Unfortunately, we come against a problem. We here at the Cloud Pickers Union have found many a dreamer, even after being reconnected with their dreams, are dismissing them as fancy and not ordained by the great I am. So the dreams are released again and caught right back up into the clouds. We've picked and redirected the same dreams over and over lately. I am has assured the union it wasn't our error that many of his children just didn't believe they were dreams from him. So we here at the union have taken that extra effort to wrap each dream in a little veil of faith before we send it back, just to give it a fighting chance. We're hoping this adjustment will improve our reassociation rate because we here at the Cloud Pickers Union believe in those dreams, even if they don't. That was I amazing. <laughs> oh I my goodness, it. that was yeah. amazing. Cloud Pickers Union. Yeah. CPU. That was CPU. so creative. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. That came to me really fast. It was really fun. That reminded me of like a Disney Pixar short. Like yeah. a yes. Disney yes. short film, you know? Yes. Let's do it. I would be that angry one. I'm copying. Like, no, I just picked this one. <laughs> <laughs> Aggressive clock. That's a, but that's a great idea though. That is a fun idea. You should talk to McKinney about making that yes, to a short that film. How fun! Yes, yeah. you guys should do that. That's okay. Cool. Yes, Lord, let's yes. do it. Dreams. Yes. <laughs> that's back. phenomenal. I do have a dream. I want to have an animation, like a little animated let's thing. Do it. I want to do it, so like, and do it together. Hey, you heard it here, folks. Coffee Writers <laughs> Cafe. Creative, <laughs> powerful. Oh, my God. Yes, that catch was, the dream zones in it back. That was gold. Amen. Wow. That was good. All right, Mr. King. Yeah. <laughs> 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 wow. Why did you have to go the table? That is terrible, but awesome. I loved it. Um, yeah, I had to restart mine a couple of times, but uh, sun showers. The real reason behind sun showers. Most of the time, the rainmakers are very careful organizing the clouds. But even even ever so often, they make mistakes and we get sun showers. So now you see a sun shower, just know that it's Tim or Ben falling behind (laughs) the production line and just smile. (laughs) this was a fun this was a fun prompt i think yeah well, really I evoked over, i was like because the other one was about rain i'm like no rainbow there's another reason i got that's gonna be an inside joke yeah <laughs> like, all right ben <laughs> 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 all right Andrea, what you got this was a really hard picture for oh. me. I only got a, a six word story, so oh. I wrote Cloud of Witnesses, Water Plants, So. Mm, cloud of Witnesses. Oh, that's good. Cloud of Witnesses. 
water plant. So, so mm-hmm. yes. Or plant. I guess I should put camp water. So, yeah. It's I like it. I like it. It's yeah. Heaven. That's what he said. Yes. 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 It's Aww. Heaven. The, uh, There's a lot of meanings in that. Parable of the Sower is yeah. just like my new little thing, and I've just been really, and it's just I like it. Well, I was just Amen. thinking of the, the scripture like on earth as it is in heaven, so that's why I was like they were. That's awesome. I like it. So. Well done. <laughs> yeah. All right, John. So I, uh, that picture made me think of the scripture in Matthew 8, 18, 18. Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will bound in heaven. Whenever you loose on earth will be loose in heaven. And then I got inspired to do a haiku. Only problem is, I didn't even know what a haiku was. <laughs> so, <laughs> I love you, John. What's a haiku? What is that? So I looked That's it up awesome. and it said, it doesn't have to rhyme. And I was like, perfect. <laughs> I'll do a haiku. So this doesn't rhyme. <laughs> There's a poem that doesn't rhyme. <laughs> a big field in heaven. The workers show up in the heavens. Seeds go down deep. Prayers light up the sky. No one sees it but God. He sits on his throne. Time doesn't exist here. God moves when he wants. God moves when he wants. He's ready to unleash. Amen. Wow, that was like a triple haiku. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So I like that. That's like very innovative. Mm-hmm. It's like a, it's, it's is that going right? Going, is that going, haikus haiku are five seven five. five. Seven, five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, not worth those syllables. Yeah, syllables. syllables. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. So now I know. It's really hard for me to listen to haikus without counting. Me no. too. Yeah. <laughs> it must be the English teacher in me. Yes. That was in the definition. <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah I was so like, what it's, a, it's a long one, but I liked it. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. No, no, it's, it wasn't. It's the syllables, right? It's yeah. Five yeah, so syllables, seven syllables, five. It's three lines. Three lines. Mm-hmm. Three lines. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it was three lines. So it's a new breed of haiku. Mm-hmm. 2020 it's version. John. It's a John Koo. It's a John Koo. Johnism. No, that's a John. Add that to the list of Johnism. From now on, prompt responses are John Q. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Hey, that works He's for reading. just understanding it. Quick, quick read. I know, that's good. <laughs> All right, Alex. Okay, I titled mine The Cloud Custodians. Well, um, this is not what I. I know, not what you were expecting. Everybody says that. James, my ethereal guide, floats beside me this purgatory? I hear myself ask. My voice sounds hollow, like the sound of the breeze through leaves. I guess it's how a, this is how a person talks when they don't have a real body. It's not really purgatory, it's what happens after. After life, you mean? James nods. Exactly. So we just clean the sky? Forever? Oh no, no, not forever. It's only until you feel that your job is finished. But what is my job exactly? Well, you call it sky cleaning. It's more like pathway clearing. What do you mean? These people are not just cleaning the clouds in the sky. They are cleaning the path so that prayers can get past all the gunk and reach the heavens. I'm sorry, what? Without the efforts of those who scrub the skies, the prayers all get stuck in pollution. So our pollution is causing prayers to not reach God? Well, the pollution, not pollution as you know it. It's not like carbon emissions or anything. Well, what then? Consider it a kind of noise pollution, the stuff that gets spewed out of talking heads, television sets, uh, sets, social feeds, talk radio, you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, all that stuff builds up and it halts the words that actually mean anything from getting where they need to go. So these people just spend their afterlife scrubbing the ether? Sure, but not forever. Well, most do it because they want to make sure their family's prayers are being heard. I look out at everyone scrubbing away and it all makes sense. That's awesome. I love it. Very creative. <laughs> the, somebody is not cleaning my pathways. <laughs> Get to work, Ben. <laughs> it's all mine. It's all mine. <laughs> all right, Tanara, you had fun oh with this goodness. one. James Jameson. Hey. Isn't that funny? Mine is mindless mining. Mm. Um, let me see. Okay. Jameson stood and looked about. It was a usual day. The sun shined the same. The clouds were just as fluffy as they'd always been. And his peers, clad in jeans, long sleeves, and various hats, still mined the clouds as they always did. No complaints, no conflict, just mining and looking. But for what? This is what struck Jameson about today. This is why he stood. He'd mined with the rest of them, mined like the best of them, but had never stopped to ask what he was mining for. 
never stopped to question why, after day-to-day -day kneeling and digging through clouds, he'd never actually produced a product. Why, he couldn't even remember what he was supposed to be looking for. Surely he knew. Surely he hadn't spent weeks, months, years even, years even, grasping at vaporous clouds and coming up empty-handed. He'd have asked questions about this before now, wouldn't he? So he watched. He watched his fellow miners, observed their gloved hands as they sifted through the thick mist beneath them. Their hands moved and tugged, swept and pulled. The only thing the hands didn't do was surface with something to be put into the... Wait, where were the receptacles? Jameson's frown deepened. He pulled one hand from his pocket and scratched at his brow. There were no receptacles. Had there always been no receptacles? And then that's where I stopped. Wow. I like dove in. So I was wow. like so invested. I'm invested. I want to know. I know. Where did they go? <laughs> I was going to end it. How it's going to end is that he decides, you know, because people are doing, it's kind of this, people do things mindlessly without thinking about it. But just because everybody else is doing it, they do it without asking questions. Oh. But at the end, he's just going to go back to doing it because it's too complicated to figure out. Wow, that's wow. a kill him. Like, Boy, wow. that's, that's deep that too. too. <laughs> like, eh, whatever. Wow, that's funny. I was just reading a part about that in a book. How interesting. Anyways, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> so tonight was a writer's workshop. We got the opportunity to, God bless you, a little bit of writing tonight. Um, making up for a week. I would love to say that I wrote on my own. I did not. No. So then getting writing today was a little challenging for me. I, I found like a really cool idea and I was talking to about it with you guys about like my autobiography slash like I think it's just going to be a fictional story and I'm going to kind of detach myself from it. Um, but I it's going to be a challenge kind of writing it from the perspective that I think I want to write it from without being too obvious. I'm I'm not I'm a very obvious person. I just kind of say things how they are. I don't really know how to wrap things in like clues. <laughs> I'm just like this is what it is. <laughs> so having to reverse that. Move to Texas and you'll understand how to Yeah, that's deep <laughs> Maybe I'll just have my husband like wrap it in a shroud of mystery for me. Metaphors <laughs> and his Texan skill. Good little Christian. <laughs> uh, so I was focusing on names just to kind of rename the characters and I really want them to mean something because we had a lot of conversation about our names. It was something that was really a part of like us growing up in, in an odd way. Like we were, we were so, we desired identity so much. We wanted to know who we were and what we were that the first, the only thing we really had was like our name. And so, like, how did we get our name, and what does it mean? And so, I feel like I can't just be, like, Sam and Sally, you know. I can't just kind of pull a random name. I really feel like it has to be something that is, ugh. So, I think I got stuck there. And I probably shouldn't have done that, but I feel like I really want to know the names so I can play, so then I can start playing with them. I want to know who they are. I mean, they're us. But, you know, right? So I got stuck there a little bit, and I didn't get to do as much writing or planning. Because we do have a deadline. Mm -hmm. Andrea really held, threw it out there, held us accountable, <laughs> and said, uh, copywriters, what are we doing here? And so um, we each kind of set a goal for our own personal writing, and mine was just to kind of create the outline. And I feel like I, I did... I'm like 80% there, so I felt like I had a little bit of freedom to play with names, and I probably shouldn't have. I jumped the gun. I didn't finish my outline yet. <laughs> Lesson learned. Can I make a suggestion? Please, yes. Um, if you have content like you want to write, but you're stuck on the name, you can always just put like an X for one person, and then XX for the next person, and True. then you can use that handy Control F, Find, <sighs> and Replace, mm -hmm. so every time there's an X, you can just fill that person's when you have that is genius I, I want to make sure that's recorded just in case your voice is a little low yes. uh, to utilize an X or whatever XX letter. whatever number mm -hmm. combination and then once I do determine the names I want to use just use the control F feature and it'll replace it through the entire yep. document mm -hmm. genius yep. I will take advantage of that actually that's probably a good suggestion so I can just move on because names are important. I mean, you probably mm -hmm. want to pray about it. 
because yeah yeah but it's it's hard when you're like oh i want to write but this is really stopping me from writing yeah it's just like a short i don't know shortcut maybe nice like no i'm digging that so that was my writing tonight what about you mr king how was your writing it was pretty good i worked more on the challenge and then of the your deadline deadline which i lost but i'm getting it back so <laughs> <laughs> what was your deadline? I it was forgot. last week, but I was have it? not. Yes. Oh, that's yes. my bad. I didn't even hold him accountable. Yes, but no, I, that was a hell I thought it was the end of the month. I thought it was the end too. No, it was, it was not. Where's that no, paper? Yeah, it, it was, was supposed two. to be running, yeah. and I just haven't ran that once. But oh, because you hurt your. He yeah, 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 so you hurt I've me. been trying to not let it stop me, but I've been writing. So still. I asked him about it, and that's why. Like, yeah. Oh, look at Andrea. She's she's so filled with grace. She's like, you hurt your knee. You can't run. That's okay. How is your knee? I mean, can you? Can you start running soon or? I I don't know. I don't know. It's it's weird. I don't know. I don't want to put too much. I don't know. Sometimes though, when he runs, it like ends up feeling better. Mm. Like he runs it out. It's weird. kind of weird. So, so I'm gonna I'm probably gonna try this week just a a little bit a little something. Mm -hmm. But I still I, I did some more. I got the stories written down. Now I just gotta have the biblical put it stuff in there. So that nice. was actually working on that, and that was. Pretty fun. So. Isn't it interesting, though, that when you're like, okay, my goal is to run because I'm doing a devotional, and then you hurt your knee. Mm -hmm. hmm. Hmm. Doing nothing. Spiritual warfare. Doing mm -hmm. nothing, not even running. Not yeah. even running. So I, that's, that's what makes me want to do it even more, run uh -huh. even more, just to, like, whatever. Because mm. <laughs> yeah. it hurts already. So. <laughs> <laughs> Might as well. Yeah. Do some, like, uh, buns of steel. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> See, what kind of like, <laughs> What kind of like you know, like, <laughs> what John of that? Just do buns of steel. Buns of steel. Are you saying these buns there are? Oh my god. And Andrea. The title of the episode. I saw him, brother. <laughs> The bromance is real. No. Oh my gosh. I don't know what's worth putting together. Or like that. This is what happens when we're not meeting on Zoom anymore. This is what happens. You can't push that mute button. Huh? I cannot. No. No, this is staying. <laughs> okay, so I worked on, um, I was looking up a lot of scriptures and then just kind of writing what God was giving me on uh, doing some sort of class on identity and what the Bible says about our identity. And, you know, looking at the definitions of things, because I love definitions. And so I was realizing, I wrote down um, what identity is and then identify, which is actually a verb. And so I realized, you know, that identity is who we are, whereas identify is who or what we choose to align ourselves with. Mm. Mm. And so That's good. that could be God or it could be other things. And oftentimes mm -hmm. we find that it's, uh, it's other things. Um, but our identity is who we are and who God designed us to be and that's unchanging. Yeah. It's just whether or not we choose to receive it. I we've been doing a lot of I don't know, our ministry has been really kind of intensifying and I feel like the Lord is just showing us the root of the issue is a lack of identity, just mm -hmm. not knowing. And and we're like, yeah, we all know it, but it's like how do we get there? Like what is the what's the roadblock for? I mean, cuz it's not just happening to people who don't know the Lord. It's mm -hmm. happening to believers mm -hmm. too. We're struggling mm -hmm. with like, how can I believe that I'm really what he says I am? Mm -hmm. when, and so, the, I mean, it's a struggle that everybody has. So I think it's an important, it's an, it's important timing. It's interesting timing. Cause I think that it's on, it's on the Lord's mind. He really wants to release that now. Right. Amen. Good job. We'll use it as soon as, as it's done. <laughs> <laughs> you already have an audience. You already have an audience, yes. All right, John, how about you? So, um, work for a nonprofit. I have to do two articles a day. And I finished the second article, turned it in. But I'd rather talk about the first article, which I finished right before uh, copywriters, uh, just because it's, um, it's, it's more of a cause that I care about. Um, so I had to write this piece that the owner of the nonprofit contacted me and he said, I want you to, to write about what's happening in Yemen. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, it is crazy over there. So he's, he's going to be donating his own money over there, but he's trying to get more people to, to give money over there. But, um, there's a civil war going on and it is so bad. It's, it started in 2015. There was like this dictator. 
I, I don't know if he was act, actually a dictator, but what they were writing about him, he was he was pretty much an authoritative like dictator, and they overthrew that government, got a new guy in place, um, was supposed to bring stability into that area. But then, because of the weakness of that leader, all these groups just started fighting, and they overthrew him, and he had to be exiled out of the country, and just this crazy civil war broke out to where the food supply is gone, wow. the water, mm -hmm. the shelter. Um, kids, they're saying every 10 minutes, a five-year-old or less is dying. Mm -hmm. And 80% oh um, of the country needs humanitarian help if they're gonna, if they're gonna live. Um, it's it's the worst humanitarian crisis in the world right now. But if that wasn't bad enough, they're getting hit by COVID-19. Mm. And so the healthcare system was already messed up. And um, now the, the hospitals that are left are shutting down because there's very little staff and they don't have PPEs. And so it is, I saw pictures. I mean, if I show you the pictures, you would... You, it would break your heart. These kids are, they're bones, you know, oh, and wow. and they're like dying on the streets. So, um, you know, I had to write about that, but people need to know what's happening over there. You know, it's it's crazy. I feel like everybody, we're all, a lot of people are just so caught up in what's going on right. here. Mm -hmm. And it's a lot. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. it's overwhelming. Um, I don't know if it was Yemen, but I did see something on my feed, social media feed, that was, like, talking about that. I think it was Yemen, but it was, like, yeah. don't forget about those people because they, you know, mm -hmm. they really need prayer and help. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they're affected by everything that's happening, too. So. Their whole food supply is down because what's happening are these these groups are blocking imports mm. because they're just so violent. Mm -hmm. And they're trying to control the area, and so they can't even get food to That's people. so sad. Wow. A uh, question for you on the writing side, though, because you're writing an article. Right. Do you, what sources do you use? I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> I have to do my own research. Um, okay. So I I basically read as many articles as possible, mm -hmm. um, try to pick reputable mm -hmm. you know, places, and, and you could kind of see like sim sim similarities. Mm -hmm. And that's what I include because you never know where it's going to go. Right. Um, some people go off in a different tangent. So if I see commonalities and I see everyone saying the same thing, I'll, I'll probably include that. Okay, so you read articles that are already out there and kind of combine them and, and summarize I link them. what's so happening. So I give credit. And you link mm -hmm. them. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. I was just wondering because I was, I've, I've been applying for like copywriter jobs and like blog jobs and stuff. And a lot of them are like, okay, submit a, a fake article about like weather or something like that. And I'm like, I can't just make up an article about the weather. You need help, let me know. I mean, um, I'll show you. Like, it's weird because I'm learning this skill mm -hmm. on the on the fly, and I've become so much better um, just because they're correcting me so much, and I love it. But um, yeah, if yeah. you need help, like linking and all, because that's one thing they're worried about. Mm -hmm. They don't want to get sued. Mm -hmm. Right, right. And if you don't link right, mm -hmm. yeah. How long? What's the word count? Because you're doing two a day, right? Uh, two a day, um, probably about like 500 okay, that's each. Not so it's not much. That's not mm -hmm. um, and then for the other company I work for, that one's about two thousand per day, uh, per article. Per article, okay. it takes me more than the day. Okay, yeah. yeah. I was gonna say, um, Whoa. Okay. <laughs> it's a lot of writing. I mean, yeah, she, she's. I'm up yeah. to like eleven from, sometimes. I'm not a writer. To right. Writing articles. Yeah. All the time. Several articles What's a day. What's weird is my confidence has gone up because. That's awesome. Um, there are like more seasoned people there, and they're already like sending me the stuff because I'm getting the likes and. And all this stuff, and even the owners of the companies for both are are recognizing me, and so that I, you know, I want this guy. So That's good. that is a testament really to community. Yeah. I mean, honestly. Absolutely. Really, that like we build each other's confidence, we glean from each other's mm -hmm. learning styles and writing styles, and what's worked for you, and and so that's why this is such a blessing. Is to, that... to everybody, I mean, everyone who's been here. You know, you've heard Gene. He's a changed his life. Yeah. So, you guys. Amen. Those cloud pickers are doing a good job. <laughs> Getting those good drinks job, really. Good job. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Poor Ben. He gets blamed, but he also gets so good. It's a little slow, but he died. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Well, good job, John. We're excited. We're, I know it's tough work having to, like, really feel the weight of all of the research and the stuff that you're doing, but God is good. Those are important things to get out, especially because it's not, it's not in the news right now. We're not really hearing about that, and so... Amen. We'll make sure that we link the article. Make sure you send it to us so we can share it with those who listen. What's weird if you is can. I'm getting emotionally attached to animals now. Because, like, John's going to be vegan in a couple months. I'm like, you jerk. Leave the animal alone. <laughs> We've already gone vegan. We're going to take him to the vegan side. That's never going to happen. That's never going to happen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you heard it here first. Yeah, exactly. Just like he said, he's not a writer, delicious. right? Yeah. He also said he's not a writer. Right. Now look at him. Now look at him now. <laughs> exactly. All right, Alex, what about you? You got some cool stuff going on. Um, well, I'm way behind on my deadline. I mean, my deadline is at the end of the month. I have to have the second edit done on my book, and um, I've been a little busy. So um, I'm actually a quarter of the way through. I just looked. Um, so I've just been reading, editing, editing a lot actually this time, um, rewording things. I think this second edit is really, it's showing me a lot and I'm catching a lot of things. And um, at least the last couple of days I've been in the zone. So I've just been kind of going at it. So Nara has me beat, but I was up till 2.30 last night, like wow. editing. Um, <laughs> And then tomorrow's like, well, I was up till six. So I'm like, well, <laughs> cool. you win. <laughs> um, but you know, I should be halfway through, but it's okay. I'm not beating myself up. I'm just yeah. giving myself grace. And well, do you think the fact that you took a little step away from it for a little while and then that kind of looked back at it again, you think that helped you have fresh eyes for it? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Because I'm going through and I'm just reading it, like starting from the very mm-hmm. beginning and just going through reading it. And yeah. Um, also, I stepped away and I was I was editing really really badly written graduate papers from another country mm. so <laughs> like i was like oh my writing really isn't that bad <laughs> like, yeah like, perspective but like yeah. editing so, all of that i don't know i think it can be in the groove of like you, correcting you. over creating so that's what i'm i guess I'm mm-hmm. oh i like what you just said so you are correcting over creating it's so easy to like get in like Oh, this is my story. Let me add this. And let me yeah, add this. gotcha. I don't know if you do the mm-hmm. same thing. You're like, wouldn't well, it be cool if mm-hmm. I had this? And, no, if the story yeah. is done. <laughs> yeah. Wouldn't that be cool? Yeah. So I actually, I told you, Lydia, but I just re, I did my whole, I had an introduction and, you know, it was mm-hmm. very, uh, how would you describe it? It was very, like, Fantastic, like not fam. Mm, it felt very formal, fairy tale ish, gnomish kind of. Yeah. Kingdom. Yeah. No, so I changed all of that. Like I deleted it and I got like. It wasn't. It wasn't, it bad, wasn't but, bad, but but once you read bad. the story, you're like. Exactly. That's exactly how I felt. That's how it felt. <laughs> yeah. Like fairy wait, dust. what? Fairy dust. Yeah. It, fairy dust. <laughs> it just it did feel like a shift in the tone because right. it, but it it wasn't bad. It could have worked. You could have worked with it, mm-hmm. but I could see where. It, revising it maybe. I sent it to a friend of mine who does editing or like you know she just does it for fun and she gave me notes and one thing she said was like the introduction sounds like it's more for you as the author than mm. for us as a reader because mm-hmm. it does introduce the world and it introduces like this is what it looks like and this is where it is and blah 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 and she's like you can even take those details and sprinkle them throughout the story mm-hmm. that's good or and I was planning on doing that but then I just got a different idea of how to introduce things so that it felt a lot more natural mm-hmm. um so I'm excited for that change. We've also had some cool conversations about book number two. I mean, we need to finish book number we one. Need to book number one. <laughs> but that's exciting, though, when there's already ideas that are brewing for a mm-hmm. continuation of mm-hmm. your work. And that's, I don't know, I think for a writer, that's really exciting that there's already, like, breadcrumbs mm-hmm. that are leading to the next yeah. thing. So. Yeah, one thing I caught myself doing earlier this week was I opened it up and then um, I have another folder in my drive for book number two and mm. anything that could possibly be in book number two, I kind of just throw it in there for later. For some reason, that was open and I started outlining book number two. And then for I was like, some hey, reason. What is going wow. on? I need to finish <laughs> book number one. Like, it's not even anything yet. So that's what I was doing. You're going to finish it. It's going to be so great. Mm-hmm. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be a good... um party like what is it book 
book uh, book, release. book release party. Yeah, yes. I, I would like nice. to be in charge of planning that party. Please. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> Sure. I'm always down for a good party. Yes. Very nice. Yes. <laughs> 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 I need a I need a cheesy little best of luck to you. I saw yeah, one that was really clever, but of course I can't remember it. But I don't want to steal somebody else's clever signature, but let me get more than halfway through of editing it, and then we can talk. It's about a great story. I know, right? Um, no, we're planning the party. <laughs> in faith. In faith. Yes. Yes. Amen. 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 All right, Sinara, what about you? Same. Editing. Um, a lot of what Alex said. Try not to overcomplicate it. Seeing where I made it harder for myself, and um, I actually just read a book that I don't want to name. That was really the dialogue was just really bad Mm -hmm. um, as far as like trying to make it very old world style Mm -hmm. and um, you know changing the verbiage and inversion all other stuff and I was like I see myself doing that a little bit in some Mm -hmm. places and so just making them speak like normal Um, some of them because it's cultural you know they have to speak a certain way um, but finding just the little details that can that can go with that culture but leaving the rest of it just very plain Wow, and, um, that's really a yeah. good observation because I can kind of get people caught up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I mean sometimes because I do want, and that's what's been so hard about it is I do want it to have a certain feel. Um, I'm big on sensory details and setting and that kind of thing, and um, the way your characters speak matching the setting. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not they can't like they can't talk like you know we do today, and it'd be just like this very deep magical earthy setting um but on the on the flip side they don't have to be like super complicated so i think for me it was more choosing to make the setting and the sensory details more important than having the dialogue completely match that like they can use contractions they don't have to speak in you know every compound word here there they can use contra- contractions they can keep it simple um and then a lot of the dialogue tags where you have like your little action beats I have too many of those. Mm -hmm. And so cutting a lot of that out, um, one... Can you explain that a little bit more? Like the action... That's Action beats. So it's like when you... um, So if you're watching a movie and your characters are talking, you can hear what they're saying and see what they're doing. So there's not this stilted delay between that person saying something and that person saying something. Mm -hmm. When you're writing, um, it can be tempting to tell what every character is doing Uh, after they say something. And then it, it stilts the dialogue. So, That's good. That's really um, good. So, yeah, you might have, like, even a whole paragraph, and then the person responds. And you're like, he said that, like, ten minutes ago. <laughs> like, what's been going on? So just pulling out a lot of those action beats that don't have to be there um, mm-hmm. and letting the dialogue just flow freely. That's where really it should. good. Mm-hmm. So that's what I'm working on. I am cleaning it up, and some of the places I'm rewriting. Today I just got to this part where this was all edited, and then I went back and there was a section that just didn't belong. And I'm like, oh, I didn't finish rewriting this. So taking that out and, but yeah, just editing and trying to really, really get it done. And I think part of editing is just how intimidating it is and overwhelming it can be when you're like, I know I need to fix that. And I probably can't get to that until I fix that. But that part would be something that I've been wrestling with for a while. And so Mm. I try to avoid it. But, like when you get stuck on a part that you know you need to clean up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's consistently the earlier part of the manuscript. Because, mm-hmm. you know, that's when mm-hmm. you first start. It's right. when you're trying to figure out your story. And and so just making it less amateurish, I guess. Well, you get into the yeah. meat of it and right. it starts to... Not yeah. Amateur. There's nothing amateur <laughs> no, about it. No. <laughs> there is. growing, you know. You yeah. Blow, so. yeah. Yeah. It, I, I see that too. Like the beginning of the book is, it sounds a little bit different from the end. It has a different tone. Like, yeah, different yeah, voice. Yeah. So trying to make that match. Yeah. Kind of like when you, um, like watching The Office, how the first season is absolutely like terrible. Nobody really knows their character yet. Mm-hmm. And then after like the third season, everybody has their character. They hit their groove and you're like, okay, these are the people I know and love. Mm-hmm. Who are these first season characters? And that's in any show. And yeah. I mean, wow. It's that's interesting. Writing. Like, I started, I'm like, what is going on? Like, who, yeah. you know, what am I saying here? Yeah. And then, too, yeah. when you have a fantasy world, there's just so much that needs to be explained, but you can't really explain it all 
right there in book one, you know, yeah. at the beginning. Yeah. Some of those questions need to be answered later. Like even with like um, the Harry Potter series, you know, where she has like the ghost that can speak in the paintings and you're mm-hmm. like, well, you know, well, what's the story? There? Yeah. What's the story there? And she doesn't answer that until the, like the very end, yeah. the last mm-hmm. book, you know? And so That's just trusting cool. that you can <laughs> leave those questions to answer later. Otherwise it's just this big, long, the source. Do you have? <laughs> think you have to answer all of the questions as a writer, like through your series, or can you just leave some things hanging? I pers- I mean, if it's something noticeable, I want to know mm-hmm. the story behind it. Um, I think if it's worth mentioning, maybe it's worth explaining. Yeah. yeah. And so there are mm-hmm. things like even like the soul release that I have in mind. You know, so I have this list of things that you know people might ask. How does that work? Or why is that there? Or at least, for the very least, don't forget about it. Because sometimes, mm-hmm. you know, as a writer, you can write something and completely forget you that it's in there. Completely forget, yeah. Because mm-hmm. like what Alex was saying with the show is I was thinking about Lost, the show Lost. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I, yeah, I love that show, but I hated the ending. Mm-hmm. I heard the, that, yeah. I and there was like either you loved it or you hated it with the the ending of the show because they left so much. Like, I felt they left so much mm-hmm. hanging. Mm-hmm. You know, and you feel that? Oh my gosh! Yeah, I, I don't get me started about Lost. <laughs> I'm one of those people that did not like it because I was like, I love for show. me, I was like, I feel like the writers started with a great concept they and did. they never knew where it was going, they mm-hmm. never, so right. they didn't answer any of the questions or like mm-hmm. they didn't follow through with anything that they built up. Yeah, mm-hmm. in yeah. my opinion, and they totally could have. <laughs> yeah, yeah. taken the story so many different directions. Yeah. So. yeah, and I feel like as a reader, when you commit to a series you're trusting that the author's going to answer those yeah, questions for sure. at some point. Yeah. Yeah, and so when they don't, it's a huge letdown. That's true. Yeah. I mean, you do get I mean, I think readers are we are committed. Mhm. We like stick with the story and we're like it's going to be explained. And then but then you get those moments where you're like, really? Mhm. Or they wrap it up so nice and you're like that's a cop out. Yeah. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was all a dream. But wow. yeah. Yes. So I do, I, I, I don't want to, I know, right? I would be remiss because we were kind of talking about your writing space. Yes. yes. And so you did some cool things. And yes. I mean, I'm just saying six in the morning, five in the morning, two days in a row. That's that's a nice groove. Like, what did you adjust? What did you do to kind of get your space feeling good? Um, so my space is mm-hmm. a space over the garage that used to be a storage area. I took everything out. Got rid of most of it, um, and then I put my desk up there. I painted the wall that's close to the window my favorite color, mm. and then um, I wallpapered the rest of the wall so it looks like cozy. And then I just put like, you know, my favorite color in there. So I have a place to sit. So if I need to like sit down and like read my physical copy and mark it up, I can do that. Um, and then it's quiet. Like you shut the door, you can't hear the kids, you can't hear anything. And so, and then I prayed over it. Um, so I just prayed over it. I invited God's presence. Um, just pray for him. And when I go in there to write, I pray for him just to bless the creativity mm-hmm. and to have okay. no expectations of, you know, like readers or what people's um, perception of it will be just to, for it to be a time of creativity with God. And before you walk in, Lydia got oh, me, um, the name of my, my, um, realm is Lior and it means it. he is my light. Um, and so even though not every story I write will be in Lior, I think because it's the first fantasy world that I created, I wanted it to be like, I wanted it to have its own, you know, highlight. So it says Lior awaits above the door. So it's like, I'm stepping into my creative it space. Just, it feels so significant. Yes. It does. Like it something right. is about to happen when I also, walk through this door. The door is a half door. Yes, I know. It's it's it looks like a little door. hobbit door. <laughs> to get in the there. The cutest yes. ever. Yeah. Well, I don't have to crouch too low, but I'm just saying. <laughs> it's like a three-four store. Yeah, it's oh, awesome. Yeah. And then a bubbly yeah. or awaits is a drum that has a lion on it, and then around the drum, around the lion in um, italics is um, Psalm 46:10. So be still and know that I am God. Yes. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Mm-hmm. So I just think it's just like a sacred is, space of is. creativity and yeah. So it's been it's been amazing. But I think the effort to create those spaces, I mean, to pray over a space, to anoint it and bathe it in prayer and make it something special. I mean, you know, that's why you hear stories like famous writers they go to this special cabin and this mm-hmm. is where they write and create. Like, 
I just love the idea. And we all obviously can't have cabins or take, (laughs) you know, two month hiatus from life yet. Uh, But I just love that we can kind of find a little corner and make it our own. And there are ways that you can really make it special that you can release. Mm -hmm. And so I just wanted to make sure you shared that with everyone because I just think it's the coolest. (laughs) So make your own special Lior Awaits space. I mean, it can't be Lior Awaits, but make it special. (laughs) So when we're not writing, we are reading so John, start us off. What you reading? Am I the only one? Who... No. Okay. Actually, we've got a couple of readers in the room. Okay, cool. So for this before week. I go into tell you what the name of the story is, I'll give you some context. Um, about two and a half years ago, God started me in this journey. Like, really, I feel like my life has been on pause, and he's having me go back in time and get this healing. Mm-hmm. And um, a lot of his identity. And through this process... Um, I've learned a lot about myself and I've learned that um, aspects of my personality aren't actually part of my personality or crutches that got me through uh, certain things. So as I was going, as I'm going through this process, I became fascinated with the brain. I've shared that with you guys tons of times. I've, I've been reading books on the brain and learning so much, but as I'm experimenting, because I'm actually applying this stuff to my life and reprogramming my brain, Um, and getting healing, I'm realizing a lot of the stuff that I was taught is wrong. Um, At least in my experience, because I'm, you know, application will teach, right? And so um, I came upon this book and it actually got released yesterday and and I haven't started reading it yet, but it's called uh, Personality Isn't Permanent. And um, basically it's from this psychologist who, and I think he's a Christian psychologist because he's talk, he talks about prayer. Um, he says the research now is showing that a lot of what we're doing is wrong and a lot of businesses are doing all these, all these uh, personality tests are actually hurting us because mm. um, what it does is it, it forces you to measure you by your past. Mm -hmm. And so it becomes an excuse, right? It becomes like, I'm this way, so I'm going to only choose these certain things because this is how I am. And he says what they've learned is you can actually choose like your personality according to what you want to do in life. Mm -hmm. And so if if you look from the filter of like, what I want in life and what kind of future I want, you can actually, so like he said, uh, he was saying him, an introvert can actually become an extrovert according to the purpose you have in life. Mm. That um, has definitely helped me, although I've always been an extrovert. Um, when I started going through this change, I actually became very introverted and actually quite scared of people. Um, and I, I just stopped talking to people. In fact, when I started coming to Coffee Writers, it was me trying to challenge myself to, to, to start talking again. Um, and God showed me Moses, you know, and that this was actually a process that anyone who wants to change, uh, go after their calling, they, they actually have to change their identity. Mm. Um, and so Moses... As I was studying him, he was actually very bold, and he was actually a great orator, they said. Mm -hmm. Like, he was under Pharaoh. He was an awesome leader. When when he saw injustice, he killed, like, the guard. I mean, this guy was not a wimp like everyone, like, at least in my church, was teaching me. He's the meekest in the world, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was, but it was until the identity shift. after injury, yeah. Yeah, something happened. Yeah. When When he decided to follow God and went into the wilderness, he no longer had the, the title and the, and the culture and, and, the, and the influence to, to hold up his identity. Mm. And everything crumbled. And he, I think he came quite depressed and, and, and um, extremely introvert, introverted, uh, scared. Um, that's what happened to me. And so as I'm going through these, this process that God has has is taking me through I realized I started getting more confident but but I wasn't using the crutches so there were certain things I was doing to make myself 
more confident in the past. So I used to do a lot of public speaking and do all that stuff, but I realized trying to, uh, I didn't, the recording is, is kind of throwing me off, but um, I realized I was putting myself above others mm. mentally to give me confidence. Mm. Mm. And um, what God is doing is he's basically telling me, you don't have to be better than anybody else to be confident, you know? And, and like, he took all those crutches away. And so now I'm becoming confident but not thinking I'm better than other people. Wow. So that's that, really that's so honest and that's so the effort that I that we've seen in you taking ownership in your identity like in partnering with the Lord on what is my identity? What is it that you want my identity to be? Right. I mean, it's just really I think a good example for a lot of us who are struggling with identity. There's some intentional work. There's some effort that needs to be put into that and I just really appreciate your transparency in that process because it's not easy. And so, like, what I've come to the conclusion, a lot of our personality that we're accepting is just a jumble of, of coping me- mechanisms mm-hmm, for mm-hmm. trauma. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, like, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and the so, older you get, the harder it is absolutely. to break free of those yeah. if you don't purposely choose to. And the thing is, it's possible. If you really want freedom... Mm-hmm. Let me tell you, I mean, I, I have this ability now that I didn't have before, and the ability is to not give a d- of what people think of me mm-hmm. in certain areas, mm-hmm. but to care for them. Mm-hmm. I could do both. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Wow, that's so good. And it's mm-hmm. powerful. It, feel, it feels like a freaking superpower. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> he even says a bonus. He said, this is how I'm going to say it. Right. <laughs> Awesome. That is awesome. Yeah. Amen. So, so you, so name the book again that you're reading. Per- personality isn't permanent. I love that. That well, just well, the well, title well. really does kind of make you start thinking about it. Like, what is actually part of who I am, and what was just. And here's the thing: people are like putting it into their whole system. Like, there are companies that won't give you a job until you match with the personality mm-hmm. type yeah. and Which that is, so is destroying yeah. any potential yeah. you have yeah, yeah. yeah. for sure so. i just think when you said that i just think of suffocating and i tend to be i like things to fit really nicely a little ocd in things sometimes just because when you have so much chaos and disorder mm-hmm. you need some things to be neat and so i can see that sometimes how that can be suffocating though and limiting, limiting to what, what you're actually supposed to be mm-hmm. doing. And so I think that's where you get frustrated and you get anxious and you're like, this doesn't feel right, but this is what everybody says I'm supposed to be doing. I mean, that's it's interesting to just release all of those preconceived ideas and just operate. Yeah. I'll be blogging about this. I know I will. It's going to be awesome. Ooh, I want to read that <laughs> when it comes out. I think a lot of times people get... Because they're so eager for identity, right, they take those personality tests and then they be like, oh, that's me. Okay. And then they attach themselves to mm-hmm. that. Right. And yeah. it's not like a conscious thing where like, oh, no, I'm, not, I'm a Enneagram 4. I can't be doing this because right. that's more consistent with the 7. It's yeah. not like that, but it's more like a, like you have your, what defines you now, quote mm-hmm. unquote. Yeah. But it's, you know, that's not where our personality comes from. That's not who defines right. us. Like God mm-hmm. defines mm-hmm. us. But I think the world and everybody's just so eager for someone to tell them who they are. Well, I mean, even with like writing the book, you know, a conversation we had growing up was about our names. Yeah. And so everybody's names had a meaning. My name has no meaning. Mm. It just means people from the land of Lydia, like Lydian. (laughs) It's just like a country that doesn't even exist anymore. And I was so disappointed (laughs) that I had no clues like there was no breadcrumbs to who I was because my name didn't mean anything. But that's where you kind of start. Like, oh, your name means beautiful rose. I'm beautiful. You know, like <laughs> <laughs> that's what we do is we try to find those little right. tricks Things of like, define you. yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Greg, Gregory is Gregorius. And, you know, it's like, hey, that fits. That's true. You know, we just find those little things. And so I, I love that we are challenging that and saying, no, God, what are you saying? And so th- there are girls, you know, who they rely on someone saying they're pretty mm-hmm. right. and they'll forget. Like, so it's so like yeah. short, like, Oh, tell me I'm pretty. And then someone says they're pretty. They'll feel good for 10 minutes. Then they'll mm-hmm. forget. 
Mm-hmm. Like if so, you can't like rely on external. There, yeah, there's right. something mm-hmm. you have to do the work so it's inside. And the truth is, you could be whoever you want to be, and you could do whatever you want to do. I honestly believe that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it's gonna come not from doing. It's gonna come from becoming. Mm-hmm. Like you right. have to become what you want to be, and that's just gonna take work. And it's very possible. You just have to. For instance, the example. Um, I hate looking at, uh, I became very self-conscious uh, uh, looking myself in video and hearing my own voice. <laughs> so I'm doing videos every day um, as if I had a YouTube mm-hmm. channel. Mm-hmm. And it's rewiring my brain. I mean, like, at first it was so tough to watch myself, but I forced myself to watch it. And I actually am enjoying it That's now. That's awesome. Um, I feel more natural. You all should see the you, you send videos. us the bloopers. Sometimes. I love yeah. it. Tanara, what you got? You know what's hilarious, though? I hate the same thing, and I've been feeling God leading me to do videos. You and I'm just like, and I, I was even thinking last week about the disclaimer I was going to give. Like, yeah, I'm not really comfortable with it. And I was like, no. Because Lord's, Lord's like, no, we're not going to yeah. give disclaimers. Ooh, you're just going to get on, gonna and you're going to do what you're supposed to do, mm, and you're going to sign off and bless everybody. And I'm just like, do that's it, so And don't post it. It's like, like, yeah. I, it's taking the pressure off deadlines and and p- putting it out is just giving me the the, the, the freedom to approve mm-hmm. um, and my personality is starting to come out and so if you just do that when you're ready when God says okay start posting stuff you, you're just going to be so much better than the other YouTubers and all of them mm-hmm. because a lot of them I, I watch now and I'm watching people do presentations and I'm going oh they're nervous oh you mm-hmm. know like they don't believe in themselves oh like I, I, I catch it um, but if you could get to that that flow before you start posting, you'll just yeah. be so much further ahead yeah. than other people. Yeah. Well, I think that's even what caused copywriters to be delayed. If we're being so real, no, because that's true. we have recordings from two years 2018, ago. y'all. Oh gosh, We've been doing yeah. this for a minute. Which <laughs> at some point those will be posted and no judgment. Um, <laughs> but I think a lot like. Alex and I were, you know, I'm going through and I have to listen to it so I can do the show notes. And I was like, oh, I don't want to hear my voice. Yep, I don't want to hear it's myself. Hard. And so it took me a long time just to go back and listen. And I do an interview with someone. We've done interviews for other people on their podcast. And people are like, did you hear it? I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to listen to it. I don't want to hear what what I sound like. Yeah, I don't want to hear what I said. And, and I love that you say that. It's just taken this two years of doing it faithfully week after week and just talking and flowing in and now people are like you're such a natural you should do this and I'm like (laughs) 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 if only you knew (laughs) but I love that it takes effort and intentionality and so just do it do the things that are uncomfortable Mm -hmm. and don't make excuses for it if you're nervous you're nervous you're human like who cares just do what the Lord is calling you to do. It's time. The Lord really is mm-hmm. doing something in the kingdom that we cannot be meek mm-hmm. in the sense of weakness. Mm-hmm. You know, there's there's a difference in operating in humility and being just humble and afraid. Mm-hmm. Right? And, you know, I was we're, we're planning a mission trip to Puerto Rico. And I'm so excited because the Lord is speaking identity over the island. But even in our planning... You know, operating in the prophetic, you know, the Lord has kind of said, like, you've got to be bold. You've got to be unapologetic. And I'm a recovering people pleaser. And so those are challenging things Mm -hmm. when you know you're going to say something in the room and everybody's not going to be like, yay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, okay, we've got to be bold. We've got to just deliver the word. And in the press release that originally we were writing, there was fear. There was concern of everyone's not going to really receive this. And I know that was the enemy just, but it's the, it's also a cultural thing. Everyone is don't be offensive because if you make them mad, then they're not going to listen. And then it's not going to be effective. And you're like, no, I'm called to give the word. Mm -hmm. You don't want to receive the word. That's on you, bruh. (laughs) Like I just have to be obedient. And I have to believe that the spirit is going to do in whoever hears it, the Spirit's going to do the work. I don't have to do the work. I'm just called to deliver the word. Mm-hmm. And and I think that is so important for all of us that have a voice, is you're just called to write the story. What happens right. after it's written, let it be. You're called to write the blog. Just do it. And so I'm, I'm excited about this season 
it's getting me really amped up and probably overly aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> It's going to be amazing. But, you know, that that's why we have to know what God requires of us. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because there's going to be someone to judge and be like, well, why didn't you do this? And why didn't you do oh, that? Yeah. Because God didn't call me to do that. He yeah. didn't call me to speak to that person. I mean, yes. even biblically, you know, we we see story after story where not everyone was healed. They, they went to certain people and they healed. And then the next group that came along, they healed that person at the gate or whatever. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's like we need to do and speak to the people God calls us yeah. to. Mm-hmm. Because he knows the timing. He knows the season. Yeah, that's know? good. And Amen. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's actually, when I was, John was speaking, I was, that's one of my pet peeves is when you go to a, a place and they say, this is my first day. I like, I wouldn't have known that mm-hmm. until mm-hmm. you told me. And now you're looking for them. Now, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So just don't say anything. Mm-hmm. Just move. <laughs> I mean, because you're like, because then it makes them, it's like excuses for their Crunches. nervousness. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Don't say it. I mean, I've always taken that, hey, am I messing up? I'm messing up. But I'm going to be the only one knowing. <laughs> <laughs> and you, and I, you're going to think I've been here for 10 years. <laughs> and most of the time you never even catch it. Like, no. I won't. I won't pick up on someone being nervous. I mean, unless they're like stuttering or something, you know, like you don't, you don't know because you don't know what they're teaching. You don't mm-hmm. know what's going on. You mm-hmm. know, yeah. you're just we're just observing. We're in it. We're, we're investing, you know, mm-hmm. so it's like, yeah. you don't even need to see that. Amen. So there are other books we're reading. John, that was so awesome. <laughs> we're so excited to, to catch that stuff. Greg, I know you're reading something. Yes. You want to tell us about it really quick? Uh, Devil in the Grove. I'm still in it. Oof. And it's a timely book. It's wow. But no, I mean, I don't know. I'm a little. It's 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 about racism in Florida, and I still like to just hearing about counties and stuff here in Florida and how bad, like, it really was back in the day. And it's and um, the author just does a real good job of explaining racism and how it was just a generation or two ago. Mm-hmm, so yeah. um, and why racism and why it's important and so those things are just really highlighted. But then it's just kind of, I don't know, I kind of, it gives me a light because I see it now and I, and, and it's just so much different. And, and that's, that's my glean of truth that I just get. It's just so much better. It could still have work, but it's still so much better. And it's literally a generation or two ago and mm-hmm. it's just so much different. And so that's, it's, it's still in the works and yeah. we're still... He's making us all listen to it, and every, and every well, I mean, he's not making us all, but everyone, he's listening to it like in the house, like on the Alexa, and I'm just jumping in midway. Yeah, just that one. Yeah, yeah she's listening. To and I'm like, I know the story, but I'm trying to figure out where we are now. Mm-hmm. So it's not easy to jump right in the middle of it because they really go into a lot of detail, extensive detail. It's good though. So I am, I'm almost done. I'm probably gonna finish it tonight. A Tree Grows in Brooklyn by Betty Smith. Um, this book is changing my life. I love it so, so much. I love her voice as she writes. I, you know, she's a little bit overly ornate in her detail, which is not normally my preference. So I do find myself speed reading just a little bit in some parts. Um, but there's something that is so beautiful speaking about identity. She wrote a lot of stories in school and she shares in the book, which mm-hmm. I can imagine it happened because it's so raw and so real, that some of the compositions she writes are stories about her father, who is a drunk. And her teacher says, these stories are ugly. You need to burn them. You need to go right home, put them in the oven, and burn them. And there, she sees them as beautiful because that's all she has of her father at this point. And it just, it just makes me think, and she does. She burns them. But of course, it's, it, you know, the book reemerges those stories, you know, because she does really go into detail about who her dad was. And she does it in a really beautiful, honoring way. And so I just think it's interesting that we're having this conversation about identity and how much our environment really does dictate our identity. But at the same time, I just love that she still was herself. Mm -hmm. She's like, I love my neighborhood. And even though I'm embarrassed to bring this guy to our flat, like to our place, I still love Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. I love what it is. I love like, and so I just, I love that we can, there's a precious balance of being yourself 
and still being aware of how other people perceive you. Mm-hmm. And, and so, amen. Identity is important, but it's such a great book. <laughs> such a great book. Great book. So this was fun. We are just under 60 minutes. Wow. Wow. If you're still listening, good job. I hope you are because there's good stuff. But thank you so much for listening. You can also follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Coffee Writers Cafe. Every once in a while, you'll see some of our shorts. Uh, We also have some Zoom videos. So check out some of our previous. Short stories, not short shorts. (laughs) Yes. Sorry. Oh, but one coming soon. I know, maybe we will have a short coming soon, but not short shorts. Not yes. short shorts. Yes. Short, like, shorts. Yeah. shorts. And short stories. Oh, Sorry, that's what Thank you, Alex. Way to go there. Short shorts. Yes. Yes. Took me back. Yeah, girl, days to do. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, no, that's right. Can we go back to the title? Have you seen these buns? <laughs> <laughs> and it's full circle. <laughs> Thanks so much for listening. God bless you guys. And Good, take night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thanks for joining us today on Coffee Writers Cafe. Please remember to like and subscribe so you won't miss out on any episodes. Connect with us on social media at Coffee Writers Cafe. And remember, creativity requires consistency, so keep writing.